welcome to everyone to this session on, on uh, um, the Bachelor of Applied Data Science. Um, what I'm going to go through in this session is just uh, talk about data science in general and give you an introduction to the Bachelor of uh, Applied Data Science. So helping us um, this evening, uh, we've got Michaela uh, Grabby, who um, is one of the coordinators of the Open Day, and Marty Gillespie um, Dawson, who is one of the Bachelor of Applied Data Science uh, students. And um, after I've spoken, um, I'll get uh, Marty to uh, speak about her experiences in the Bachelor of Applied Data Science and answer any questions that you may have about it. Okay, so um, I'm the course director for the Bachelor of Applied Data Science. So um, I'm in charge of um, writing all the course descriptions, um, running all the studios in the uh, Bachelor of Applied Data Science and making sure that all the students are on track. So yeah, so if you want to contact me, my email is there and we've got another email at the end um, uh, for prospective students who are interested in data science. So let me see if this works okay. Uh, okay, so we're gonna to have to scroll down. Okay, so if you've come along to this talk, um, I guess you know a little bit of about what data science is, or you've got an interest in what data science is. So um, you would have heard a lot of hype about data science over the last uh, few years. And the main reason about that hype about data science is because the amount of data that uh, we have keeps on increasing, um, some would almost say exponentially. Um, and we have to have people who can analyze that data. So just a small fact, it's estimated that the amount of data that's been generated in the last two years is the, um, is the equivalent to um, the amount of data that was generated in all um, the length of time prior to that. So we have more and more data being uh, generated and that's only uh, going to increase. So what's the point of having data if you're not going to, to use it to um, help you make decisions and um, help you uh, assist people? And that's what the role of the data scientist is. So what, what data scientists um, do is they take that data and they try and make um, useful decisions from that data so that it can help businesses, research organisations, um, universities, uh, uh, teachers, um, and the general public in, in using um, applications on their phone. So because the demand for data scientists is so high, the, um, the entry level salaries for data scientists is also very high. This is two years out of date, so I, I need to update uh, these facts. But in 2019, it was estimated that the mean annual base salary of an incoming data scientist was 95,000 in US dollars. And again, the reason for that is that the number of people who have these skills to um, understand data, deal with it, and uh, show how to make decisions from that data is very small, but the amount of organisations who want people to uh, use that, uh, um, take that data and assist them with it is uh, just getting larger and larger. So the demand for data scientists just increases, and as the demand for data scientists increases, then the salaries from it increase as well. So, and, and the other reason to, to do data science is that um, it's quite, it's really interesting to try to do. It combines uh, math, as I'll come to in a minute, if you're keen on mathematics and you're 
reasonably good at computer programming, it combines mathematics, it combines computer knowledge, and it combines applications with uh, various fields so that you can help people working in those fields understand what the data means to them. So here's, here's the summary of what I've just been talking about. This is what applied data science is. So an applied data scientist is someone who has mathematical skills. So you need mathematical skills to understand the algorithms that you use to um, uh, do the uh, machine learning. You uh, need statistics to be able to be certain, to give some certainty to the decisions that you make with the data science. You need computing, computer science and IT because you've got to be able to understand computer systems. You've, you've not only just got to be able to program in computing, you've also got to be able to understand computing systems and what's the best way to deal with the data. One of the terms that crops up with, the data, with data science is big data. And big data is data which is too large to be able to be dealt with on your own computer. So you've got to work out how computers, how clusters of computers can deal with storing the data and processing the data. So that's an important thing with data science. And the intersection between computer science and mathematics is commonly called machine learning. So that's teaching um, computers to understand algorithms which can process data and try to predict um, things from that data given um, future observations. Okay, So um, you may have heard of neural networks. That's a, uh, a type of machine learning. So the other thing that uh, is needed for a data scientist is domain or business knowledge. So you've got to be under you've got to be able to understand the problem that you're working on. The reason that you need to understand that is that you've got to be able to talk to the people working in that field, understand what data they have, how you can use that data, and then once you run your programs on that be able to com communicate the significance of that data. So for example, um, I'm going to talk about later about the projects that we're doing in the Applied Data Science Studios. But, but for example, we have a, a, a project that the students are doing at the moment, which is um, working on the World Mosquito Program, which is a huge research program, which is based at Monash University, on trying to eliminate dengue and the Zika virus. So the students in the Applied Data Science Studios have to be able to communicate with the biologists and epidemiologists who um, work in those fields, understand the significance of the data that they're dealing with. Then once they've um, generated machines that uh, make predictions for the, that data, they've got to be able to communicate that data. Or you might be able to, you might be working in a, a business field. So you've got to understand what data a particular business has and how you can um, uh, use that data to help the business make um, uh, more profits from the information that they have. So, so data science is really the intersection between those three fields. It's you've got to have mathematics and statistics skills to be able to understand what the algorithms are doing and what um, your decisions mean. You've got to have computer skills to be able to program to do the machine learning, but also to understand how you can deal with complex data. And you've got to have domain knowledge. You might specialize in a particular field, like, so for example, your domain knowledge might be a particular business or your domain knowledge may be um, some biological field, and you work with biolog biologists to understand that data. But you've got to have some kind of domain knowledge that you're working with. So that's really what data science is. So let's talk about some applications of data science. Um, 
some some common application. I'll, talk, I'll go through um, these in a, uh, all in a minute. But some common everyday applications of data science that you'll come across are internet searches. So Google's algorithm for um, finding the most relevant pages for your searches is a data science algorithm. What it does is it's a continually learning algorithm, which as you put it, as you feed in more information, it gets better and better at um, understanding what people want from their searches. So the simplest thing is an internet search is an application of data science. Targeted advertising that you get to either on Google or Facebook or whatever interface that you're working is in is an application of data science. They look at the pages that you've previously visited. They use that information to compare you, you with other people who have visited those pages and then they target advertising at you. If you go on, on to Amazon, you, uh, you look at a book that comes up with other suggestions of books that you might be interested in. Or if you go on to Spotify, you uh, look at a, some particular music that comes up with suggestions of other music that you might be interested in. All of that are machine learning algorithms behind uh, that, which are applications of data science. So automatic price comparison that you get on the internet, you want to find the price of some, some widget, you type it in, then Google comes up with a whole lot of different comparison of prices. They, those things may not be exactly the things that you're looking at, but it's still an application of data science. It's collecting a whole lot of information and feeding what it believes is, is the relevant information to you about that data science. Fitness sensors are another simple example of data science. So they're taking information, observations of your fitness and comparing it with the data they have from other people and then trying to use that to uh, tell you whether you should be doing something or whether you might be suffering from um, some particular disease or, or things like that. So that's another example of data science. Virtual assistants are an example of data science. So if you talk to uh, Siri or uh, I believe Alexis on, um, uh, in Google, they've got to try and understand the garble that you're speaking. So they've, they've got algorithms behind uh, that, which then try to work out what you're saying and what the relevant question is. And all of that is data science. And as you talk more and more to a, per, a particular virtual assistant, then it goes through a process known as reinforcement learning, which it gets better and better at understanding um, what you want. And so the, the suggestions it makes improves with time. So that's an example of data science. Um, image recognition. If you go, um, I don't know how many of you uh, live in Melbourne, but if you go on the Eastlink freeway without a tag, then you get a bill in a couple of days. So how does that work? Well, they have sensors which read um, the number plates at each of the gates that you go through. Those number plates may be blurry, so they have to have some data science algorithms behind that, which under, which take those images and try and work out the best approximation of what that number plate is. Um, text prediction and grammar rules. So if you use, when you use your phone, it comes up with suggestions of what you're going to, to type. And, it, and that's an example of data science. As you write more and more, it has a, a bigger database that it can look at and it comes up with improved uh, suggestions for what you're going to write. If you um, write emails um, via, uh, say for example, Google, it will underline things which it uh, believes is not the correct grammar. So again, that's an application of data science where they 
uh, build up a database to try and understand what the correct thing to do is. You may disagree with their grammar rules, but that's your choice. Um, sentiment analysis. So um, say, for example, if you, you type something in, uh, in Facebook, it looks at, at it and it tries to understand how you're feeling and then tries to guide you with uh, things based on that sentiment analysis. Um, Facebook and uh, LinkedIn use network analysis. So they try and pair you up with people who they believe have similar kinds of interests as you. Again, that's an application of data science. So all of those are everyday applications of data science that you come across. The, if um, we look at this figure here, there's um, a whole lot more applications of data science that we, we come across. So, uh, again, um, under healthcare, we have medical image analysis. Again, within our data science studios, the students work on medical image analysis. Last semester, they tried to um, uh, do image analysis of brains. This semester, they're doing images analysis of x-rays. Bioinformatics, we had a group working on trying to um, understand DNA sequencing last semester um, in our studios. Um, Self-driving cars are a, an a very important application of data science. So there's all of these um, applications of data science. I won't go into too much detail because I'm going to use up my 20 minutes fairly quickly uh, if I go into too much detail. But if, you, if you've got questions afterwards, we can come back to the, this kind of thing. Finance is a very important application of data science. Okay. So let me talk about the Bachelor of Applied Data Science. So this is the first co-designed undergraduate. It's been going now uh, for, we're in our second year. So we've had a um, two intakes into the Bachelor of uh, Applied Data Science. Mardi was, was in our first intake. So she's doing um, her second year now. Um, and it's the first co-designed undergraduate degree. So it's a um, collaboration between the Faculty of Science and within the Faculty of Science, it's mainly the School of Mathematics, which I come from, and the Faculty of IT. So it's a degree which um, combines both science and IT as, as core parts of the Bachelor. It has, and this is what we, uh, like to um, tag is one of our main selling points, interdisciplinary problem solving units. So these are the studios that students work in where they get hands-on introductions to data and they learn how to do data science from the get-go from the um, first semester. So there's, there's a few things we have to teach you within the first semester. Like most students, we have to teach you how to program. Uh, but once we've gone through that, you start working on data, analyzing data and doing data science. Then we also have applied studies. So applied studies are your domain knowledge. You do four units as part of your degree, which are a particular sequence and from that, you get to understand how data science is important for those particular studies. And I'll, in a minute, I'll just go through briefly some of those applied studies. So those are the core selling points that we have as part of the degree. So the, the degree comes in two flavors. It comes in the uh, Bachelor of Applied Data Science, which is a three-year degree, and the Bachelor of Applied Data Science Advanced with Honours, which is a four-year degree. Okay, so I'm just going to swap over now to the handbook because this gives us a better idea of, of the course progression. So hopefully you can now see that. So this is the uh, course progression for the Bachelor of Applied Data Science. So there are four main 
sequences within the uh, course. So the ones on the left hand side of the data science studios. So these are the things that I've been talking about where you get to work on data science within groups from the get go. You have people coming along and pitch you pitch to you on projects, then you work for the length of the semester on those projects, and then you have to do uh, write a report at the end of the semester on um, the modeling that you've done and the understanding that you've done uh, come to from those projects. So there's four um, data science projects, uh, data science units that you do for the first four semesters. Then in your final semester, you do a capstone unit, which is an advanced data challenges and is a double unit. And that brings together everything that you've done as part of the degree. And again, it, it will be similar to the data challenges, but it's a double degree. So, and it's bringing together everything that you do. Within computing science, you do six units in computing science. You get a basic introduction to computing science in the first two years. Then you start to do um, some more advanced uh, units on deep learning and advanced data analysis in your third years. Then there's a mathematics sequence. So again, in your first year, you um, do core subjects, which um, go through calculus and algebra and provide you with the fundamentals for doing uh, the mathematics of data science. And then you go into one of two sequences. You either do a sequence on uh, numerical algebra, and that's how to solve very large um, algebraic systems on computers, or you do a sequence on statistics and probability, where you understand how, um, how to be certain about the decisions that you're making from the algorithms that are coming up. But it also provides backgrounds into the machine learning algorithms that you do. Then there's the applied studies units. Um, and I'll go in a second through the applied studies units and then you have two free electives that you do. So the free electives can build on any one of those um, three sequences that I've already talked about, or it could be something completely different that you might want to go and study how to learn Japanese. So long as you've got the qualifications for those electives, you can then go away and do the electives. So the applied studies, let me just briefly go to them. So at the last count, I think there was round about 30 applied studies. So the apply, I'll just scroll through them slowly so that you can um, see the kind of things that you do. But the applied studies come from um, faculties all across the university. So there's applied studies from the Faculty of IT, the Faculty of Science, Engineering, uh, Business and Economics, um, Pharmacology, uh, Medicine, um, Law and Arts. So anything that you're particularly interested in, you can make that an applied study sequence as part of your degree. And the idea is, as I've said, to build up domain knowledge so that you're able to to communicate with people in those fields, be able to understand the kind of data that they're working with, and be able to um, help them make decisions with that data. Okay, so let me go back to this. So um, the, the uh, indicative ATA for getting into the Bachelor of Applied Study uh, Bachelor of Applied Data Science is around about 87, okay? So the Bachelor of Applied Data Science on advanced with honours is a four-year degree. And in your four-year degree, half of that um, uh, last year is an industry research project. So it's basically an internship as part of um, uh, your degree. You'll also uh, do two subjects on uh, research methods 
and then you can do further electives as part of that degree. So um, the indicative ATAR for that is 93. Okay. So I've talked about the data challenges, but let me just talk a little bit more about uh, the kind of projects that uh, students are doing as part of um, the data challenges. So as I've said, these data, these projects are um, students working in groups of three and four, supervised by um, uh, a teaching team which uh, has experience in data science. And the idea is you build up your technical skills, your leadership skills, your collaboration skills, and your presentation skills with um, these, uh, these units. So you've got to understand how to um, deal with the data, how you can uh, do the programming to understand the data, how you um, can explain to people in the field how they can use that data. So the kind of things that we're working on is um, modelling of the Australian national energy market, classification of brain hemorrhages from MRI scans. Uh, uh, so that's an image classification problem. Classification of fish species in Lake Victoria in Africa, which is again an image uh, classification problem. Optimization of stock portfolios. So you can see that's an application in business and finance. Modeling of mortality in intensive care units. So you're taking data on um, how well people are progressing in intensive care units. And then you've got to make a decision on whether from new observations that you get, how well someone will go in the ICU, whether they need more attention than other people. Predicting sales in stores, uh, classification of molecules from scanning microscopes. Again, that's an image classification problem. Classification of clouds from satellite data, another image classification problem. Um, predicting country speeds from Google Maps. So that's just getting data and trying to make decisions on that. Classification of DNA mutations. So that's getting DNA sequences and trying to predict whether people have a particular disease. Modeling uh, the Melbourne weather and climate. So taking the data on the Melbourne weather and climate and trying to predict, given say for example, the temperature and, and pressure today, what the temperature, pressure and rainfall will be tomorrow. Um, predicting marks from chat groups. So that's an application of data science from um, educational technology where you create a, um, a chat group and you try to understand from the communication between the group what final mark that they get. So those are the kinds of things that they work on. And um, so hopefully you've got there an understanding of uh, the kind of things that are covered by a data science and the kind of things that we cover as part of the Bachelor of Applied Data Science. So um, if you've got any uh, in inquiries about that, you can go to the URL uh, that's here, or you can send an email to the uh, email address that's here. And hopefully that'll eventually come to me and I can try and assist you um, with your interest in the Bachelor of Applied Data Science. So before I go on to questions, I'll just briefly hand over to Madi to let her talk um, a little bit uh, about her experience about the Bachelor of Applied Data Science. Hi everyone, I'm Madi. Um, so I transferred into the Applied Data Science course from a science global studies course, um, just because I didn't have any background in programming, I'd done a little bit of maths, um, but I was really interested in, um, as Simon discussed, like the idea of putting together heaps and heaps of numbers and trying to tell a story with it, um, communicate some kind of theory um, from the data set. And so far, this has been really exciting. Doing the different projects is really cool because it's a very hands-on experience. You get to work in a team, which is great as well. Um, and I've become really close with the other members of the course. 
Um, so yeah, it's definitely challenging at times, especially with the learning curve of programming, but it's definitely achievable, even if you have no experience. Um, so yeah, I'd highly recommend this course because it's also very, other skills that you develop are very transferable. Um, as we've seen with all the different applied studies, you can really take it anywhere you want, which is quite exciting.